Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us for another edition of our weekly real estate backstory. We go over the comings, the goings, all the things happening in the Atlanta real estate market. My name is Alan Richardson. I'm the managing broker here at Max One Realtor Realtor Partners. My name is Ming Richardson. I'm the compliance broker for Max One Realty and Realtor Partners. Yeah, thanks for joining us. We have, as usual, a lot of really interesting things to cover this week. Uh, and so we're going to be talking about you know, kind of what's going on. Like, like we're very optimistic right now. We're starting to see inventory up and mortgages are coming down. So we're going to go over that in just a minute. And rates, uh, not the application. Yeah, yeah. And actually, <laughs> mortgage applications are up. Overall, interest rates are coming down, which we're really glad to see. But we'll we'll get into that in just a second. So we want to jump into social media right from the very beginning, and and, and in particular. Instagram. So Instagram themselves, you know, the, normally the best source of, of information on Instagram is are, are the actual social platforms themselves. And so they they you know they reached out to, to influencers and podcasters and that kind of stuff and said, listen, we have some advice for you. So there's some things. First of all, we want you to avoid. So the first one is no reels longer than 90 seconds. You got a minute and a half. So if you're going to be doing any kind of short form or vertical video. 90 seconds is really where you want it to be. So you want to be somewhere in that 75 to 90 seconds is what they consider the sweet spot in there. Um, so, you know, with reels, it, it's about short bits and pieces of content where you send them somewhere else. So some other recommendations they have is, uh, you know, first, first of all, think about when your audience is online, post then, you know, that, that makes sense. Uh, you know, in addition, tie in any other social aspects, social platforms that you can as well. And so, uh, and then only post content that you create. And now I think that one is pretty easy for, for those of us in the real estate world, uh, because it needs to be like our content. But, you know, th this is where we sit down and do the talking heads videos and talking about what's going on. It's not just about showing properties, it's about showing expertise and building, you know, a relationship. Yeah, that's a great word for it kind of thing. So we want um, next we want to talk about, you know, we're starting to see another round of Fraud. vacant land real estate scams. And and the vacant land ones are really, really tricky. You got to be very careful. So and, and we have personally had some of these attempted in, in our brokerage out there. And so with the vacant land scams. And of course, it never made it to closing. No, no, of course, they never will. I can't say they never do, but it, it'll cause it problems. Right? Well, it made it closing, but yeah. it never closed. So first of all, with a vacant land scam, normally what happens is you're going to get called from someone that claims to be the seller. Um, mm -hmm. and, and most of the time they're going to have like something big. It's a family emergency or. I just you know, inherited a property and my wife's got medical condition. And yep. therefore I need to, I know according to Zello, my property is worth half a million dollars. I'm willing to let it go for three fifty. You know, as a yep. listing agent, no brainer. There's going to be a lot of people that want a $150,000 discount. So the transaction goes through, uh, the contract goes through and then just but, right before closing well, but what? normally these are on vacant land or at least on, yes. on property that's owned outright they're doing it because this scam won't work in, if there's a mortgage on the property so the, the, these are normally has... on vacant land yeah. so we're not talking most of the time we're not talking about houses here uh sometimes vacant houses can fall under this but most of, most of the time this is going to be for vacant land and they're also they're not going to be from in, inside the country uh, or they're going to have email addresses, phone numbers that, that are from uh, other places, that kind of stuff. They're going to use Google. The, the biggest you know. one right now is WhatsApp. Uh, you all see a WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. Contact me in WhatsApp yeah. or different other social platforms, yep. but not necessarily a number or information in the United States. If, if they do send you photo ID, it normally looks like it's been Look, run through a grinder kind of thing. I mean, it, it's photocopied. We've seen, we've seen some really Some are good decent. Ones. Most are really pretty poor, though. So... But you know you want to make sure that, that you get sell, seller's id most of the time they don't care about due diligence they don't care about anything other than a quick close all they want to do is quick close 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 and and your spidey sense should start going off here when if you give them any pushback expect them to become angry they well, will be very manipulative if not angry then they will just ghost you because they know that you know what you're doing and you're not going to fall into their scam. Yeah. So really quick on driver's license. If most attorney now, most, not all, uh, Coast and Quarter does. 
uh, have a basically a pro software that scan in a driver's license, whether it's via email, what have you, and they can and basically a pop up whatever state that it was issued from the actual person's yep. photo. So it'll validate whether or not that's a legitimate uh, driver's license. So you know, if you never met your client before, be very wary because it can be a scam. Yeah, just watch out for it. Most of the time, these are going to get caught before closing anyway, but you don't want to get caught in that whole mess. So, all right, moving over to like, what are the top compromises that buyers are willing to make in order for home ownership? So the National Association of Home Builders came out and they, and they said, listen, this is what folks are looking to compromise more on. And when you look at the list, you can see why there's a shift in what the builders mm -hmm. are building. And so the top compromise for buyers right there is they're willing to take a smaller lot, smaller land lot. And that's why, what do we see in new construction? Smaller, smaller lots, right? <laughs> so uh, another 36% are willing to accept fewer amenities, uh, you know, less bells and whistles, those kind of things. Well, the going HOA on. is also more affordable that way too, yeah. if you think about it. Another 36% are willing to, to move farther away, which is why we're seeing a lot of neighborhoods in places mm -hmm. that we never would have thought we saw new construction. They can buy there cheaper, so they're willing to pass that on. And then 35% say they're willing to take smaller homes. Absolutely. And if you look at you know the townhomes, the small homes that, that our builders are buying, small lots, you can really see where this, this research, they're listening to it, right? Because this is what the buyers are telling them. And for us, we got to make sure that, that we're... You know, like like it may not be the perfect house for you, but it might be the right house for our, our well, clients out there. It's about affordability at this point. Yep, that's really exactly what it comes down to. So, overall, so uh, this past week uh, we got the you know the inflation numbers came out, and you know overall the consumer price index dropped. Yay! It, we're seeing it come down now. Is it where we want it to be? No. Not Has yet. it hit the Fed's target of two percent? Mm, no. 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 But. It's coming down, and we're really, really glad to see that. And so, when when that happens, what you know, what happened to in interest rates this past week? Boom, it went down. they dropped as well. So we saw them now. They they're just like just a Snitching. just a kiss above seven percent right now. And we, I, I think we're we're going to continue to see that 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 continuing to move its way down, which is a really good thing for us. Now. In talking about mortgage payments, one thing that we've seen that you know, there's some new data out this week, and and it's kind of confusing when until you actually put your head to it. And so overall, the median down payment has really shot up. How much down payment money our buyers are putting down? And so, but it doesn't. That, when you just look at that number, it doesn't tell the whole story because you have no. to put together who is making up a large percentage of our of our buyers right now. Boomers. And our boomers are coming in and they don't really get, care about mortgage rates that much. They're coming in and they're putting huge amounts of money down. They're carrying the equity from their current property to the next over one. to the next property. If not buying all cash. Yeah. So, you know, what we're seeing is, you know, the average. So when, when you look at this report, you think, you know, the average down payment is 26,000, 13 percent. That may be the average, but that's not the average first time buyer. The average first time buyer down payment is between six and seven percent. That's normal. I mean, and, and honestly, by the time you add up first plus last plus security deposit, pet deposits, you're really, you're really in that price range a lot of times. Absolutely. So, um, anyway, so just when you see the that number, understand that you know the boomers are what's driving that, you know, that being right there. Now, the other thing that we've seen kind of shift here over the past year is the demand for second homes has gone away. Well, you know, if you think about it, it's you don't have that much disposable money and back when the interest rate was really cheap. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like maybe a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars for second homes. And that was nothing. Uh, if you think about it, well, and, but and, now it's twenty three, twenty five hundred dollar well, a month. Well, and, and, and so what we've seen is that, you know, back in, in 2021, especially the demand, that, that's when the demand for second homes really, really peaked. And then it dropped to about half of that in 2022. And then this past year, it's dropped in half again. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, in the Atlanta market, just overall second home mortgages are down by 45% in the past year. And it's down another 50% from the year before. So that demand is really kind of dried up. What we are seeing is we have a lot of potential sellers that are considering, am I going to rent my, my second home or am I ready to sell? 
So we think that that's a pretty good opportunity for those looking for potential sellers right now. This could be a good market to really be looking at right now. Absolutely. So overall, new listings, new listings are up. And so we want to kind of show you exactly what new listings are looking like. You know, some of this is seasonal, you know, like, like it, 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 we normally do trend up. But when you look at new listings, and, and that's one thing that I, we kind of want to stress to you, everyone keeps talking about, hey, new listings, new listings, and all these listings are going to drive prices Price down. down. But when you look at the, the overall volume of new listings compared with past years, we're, we're at 40%. I mean, I mean, <laughs> we're still we're still down forty percent from where we were pre-pandemic, so it's it's very needed. It's good to see that our inventory levels increasing. Don't think that that we're where we need to be yet, right? And so, same thing with our total active listings. When you look at our total active listings, yes, they're trending up, and we are so thankful. Having interest rates coming down, inventory coming up, this is a great place for us to be right now. However, if you compare us to back in previous years, there's a big difference there, right? There's a little gap. Yeah. So our new listings, when you compare us to just, you know, pre-pandemic to where we are now, we're just not there. I mean, like, 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 and, and, and I want to, I guess that's what we're trying to stress to you is that this is really an important thing for us because what we're not seeing is that sale prices are not dropping. And so everyone's like, oh, well, if, if with inventory increasing, prices are going to go drop. Well, first of all, with interest rates coming down, they're not going to go up. Demand is going to go up, and that's really going to set We have that. still a lot of pent up demand. Yeah. So overall, we're seeing where, where our median sale price is still up. Uh, you know, uh, CoreLogic, CoreLogic just released what their current and, and forecast is for the year. They're, they're, they're predicting that nationwide, around 3.7% for the year, they were up 53 so year over better, year. You know. we're better than what they're projected. Well, and if you look at just in the Atlanta, I mean, for Georgia overall, we're somewhere in the 5 to 7% property value appreciation range. It's a really good, safe place for us to be. Now, one thing that we are seeing is that we have a lot of sellers that are cutting their home prices. I just had cut mine. Yeah, 18% of sellers are cutting their asking price. And so we're seeing where the good properties that come out priced right on the market, 45% of them are under are under contract within two weeks. But for those sellers who are trying to max Maximize. out and sit out there, guess what? They are sitting out there. That's exactly what they're doing. Now, to tie in with what we are talking about earlier, when you look at, even though we do have rising inventory, which we're glad to see. The other thing we have is we have rising population. Yeah. We, we, I mean, like, like if you compare us back to, you know, we have 70 million more people than we did in 1995. Right. And so we have, we have a rising population. We have a lot more and more steady jobs. I mean, you know, during COVID jobs took a hit, but now we're seeing more and more people are employed, that kind of stuff. But what we're not seeing is the overall volume of sales. There is a ton of bent up, bent, pent up demand. And, and that pent up demand, as soon as interest rates comes down, I'm telling you, we it's are going to, it's going to blow it's, up. We are, we are poised for a very interesting summer and especially fall and winter. Well, once again, it's all contingent on the interest rate. It is, but we're looking, I mean, like right now with rising inventory, the thing about inventory is that inventory is going to sell right? You know, the vast, the bulk of that inventory. So more listings, more sales. That's always right. the bottom line. We are seeing interest rates already starting to soften up and we have a massive amount of population. We have a, a growing population and we have um, a lot of people that want, we have just a ton of pent up demand. And so we need to be ready for that because one thing that, that, you know, I had a conversation just this past week and they're like, should I wait or should I buy now? Well, you can wait and pay more for this if you want later on, because, you know, homes like this, I mean, I understand that, you know, well, we want to wait for interest rates to come down. Well, then everybody else is too. And, and we're, we're going to see if you remember like what happened in summer of 2021, when everyone's fighting over inventory, like this inventory is going to end up going really, really quickly. And so when, when if, if interest rates come down, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned that we're going to see properties appreciate more than they necessarily should. Right. And, you know, that, that's, that's kind of a concern. Because right now, if you look at it, what what are our buyers thinking about? And so uh, Citibank just did this big survey looking at, at today's home buyer market out there. And, and what, they, what they found is that 69% of prospective home buyers plan on buying no matter what. 
doesn't matter what's happened with the market, interest rate, prices, almost 70% of your buyers are going to buy. And so they're all poised, sitting in the background, just waiting for that thing to, to kind of tick, you know? Our buyers today know that it's a more competitive market. They understand that. They don't like it, which I understand, but they understand that that's what's really going on with that. And so now two other interesting things that came out of this study. So first of all, you know, those who actively scroll through, you know, looking at listings, that kind of stuff, 65% of them are just, they're researching what their budget can buy them. Right. What the current monthly rent allows them for what price point of home. Right. So like, like a lot of folks are out there just kind of doing that surfing, seeing what they can buy mm-hmm. for what their money is. And even, even for folks who, who are not planning, but still look at real estate listings. I found this one very interesting. 31% of folks visit open houses for fun. On, on one hand, you may say, well, that's not anything new. That just means that 70% of the folks who are at your open houses are there looking for housing. They're not there for fun. So the vast majority of open houses are still there to buy a house, right? So just understand that, you, yes, we get tire kickers. Only about 30% of tire kickers are, are actually there. Now, uh, just this week, Zillow released um, their, their rental market update. And they said, you know, renters need to make $80,000 a year to afford just the average U.S. rental. And, you know, what I find really interesting is the oh, how much income do you need to buy a starter home in Atlanta? It's right around $92,000. We're not talking that far off. And so if it, would you rather, you know, go out and get that rental and pay somebody else's? 100%. Yeah. I mean, it's a 100% interest rate. That's mm-hmm. Ming's favorite line, right? And so like, like just talking to our renters is so important right now. That that's where our first time buyers are all poised. And you know, the rental market is not doing that great when, I mean, overall, when you look at, at what, what it's costing, I mean, rental rates are still going up in Atlanta, not as much as others, but we've overbuilt. So that, that's still a really prime market out there. Now, over on our on new construction, we're seeing where multifamily is bouncing back up again. Um, new construction is kind of hold, for single family is actually kind of holding steady a little bit steady over there. Um, but overall, our our investor purchases, you know, as far as like what are investors buying, uh, it's it has it's risen for the first time in two years. More investors are back in the market right now than we've seen in a long time. Well, if you look at a stock market, it's kind of very wonky right now. Well, it's so, up and down. Yeah, but, it's like a roller coaster. But you know, for the first time in two years, we, we've seen a rise in investor purchases. And in the Atlanta market, that really is impactful because we have a lot of investors in the Atlanta market over here. And so it, it, it really is kind of a punch because, especially for our first-time buyers, when you look at what investors buy, they're buying first-time buyer homes. I mean, that, that's, that's where that competition really, really ends up hitting. Overall, as far as a, a, you know, investor share nationwide, it's, a, it's at 19%. Atlanta actually has a much higher percentage. Atlanta is closer to 24% our investor owned. And so we investor that investor market does affect us here locally quite a bit. You know, of that, you know, uh, Resi Club went out and did, did this big study looking at which market has the highest number of single family uh, rental homes in the nation. Guess who's number one? We are. We are, right? So this does have impacts on us. And we, and, and so... I just, I want to make sure you understand what's happening in the marketplace and those kind of things going on. All right. So coming up in training this week. So we have uh, three CE classes happening this week. So we have both the MLSs are, are, are with us this week. So George MLS is going to be with us on Tuesday over in our Conyers office going over, you know, the, all the products that they do as well as the, um, the new Connect MLS, which is the one that everyone's made the switch over to. Please, you've got to get that training in. It's going to help you operate. Absolutely. Now, Matrix is also going to be, uh, FMLS and Matrix is going to be happening in our Fayetteville office. I am positive they're going to be talking about the fact that, that they also have um, Paragon. Paragon now, too, Absolutely. as well. And then on Thursday, we have estates, divorces, and contracts who can sign. That's going to be by our attorney over in the Carrollton office. On, coming so up please on this join Thursday. us. Hope you guys have a great week. If we can be any kind of service, please call, text, smoke signals. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you. Happy Monday. Bye-bye.